This video won't have a lot of theory, but I'd like to present some basic facts about demographic transitions in developing countries. The age structure of a society really does matter. For instance, very old people and very young people typically are not working and they need to be supported in some way by those who are working. This will influence the distribution of output and spending in a developing economy. One core reason why there are more elderly people in the world is simply that life expectancy has been going up. This is a trend which started in northwestern England in about the year 1800 and since has spread to most parts of the world. A lot of the biggest gains in life expectancy have come from the limitation of contagious diseases and also better nutrition. You can see that we find this trend in the more developed nations, the less developed nations, and the least developed nations. Of course, the points out here to the right, those represent projections rather than actual data. And by the way, if you're wondering for the least developed nations why this part of the curve here is fairly flat, that's mostly because of the HIV AIDS epidemic. We can see also that fertility rates are falling. This means that families or single women are having fewer children. This trend came first to the more developed nations, but it has spread also to the less developed nations and the least developed nations. And in terms of projections out here, 2040-2050, you can see there are predictions of an eventual partial convergence. Here's one concrete way to think about what this graph actually means. If we take the year 1800, a woman might have spent 70% of her adult life basically bearing and rearing young children. In many parts of the world, that now has gone down to about 14%. So that, of course, means more time and economic opportunities for women. In many instances, first we will see an infant mortality rate falling due to advances in sanitation, health care, protection against contagious diseases, and nutrition. And then a bit later, we see total fertility rates falling. And if you track those two variables in the case of Brazil, it's actually striking, as you can see, how much they are moving together. Because of declining fertility, in many parts of the world, the youth population has either peaked or it is falling. So if we look at these lines, this line here is for Africa, where the youth population is still rising, and these lines here are for Latin America and the Caribbean, Asia and the world. And in those cases, the youth population has either peaked or is fairly close to peaking. This means two things. First, a lot of these societies, even in developing countries, they are already starting to become older. And second, it means that Africa, on average, is not becoming older, but will have a substantial number of young people entering the workforce. This is sometimes called the demographic dividend. On one hand, the demographic dividend can boost economic output growth if those individuals can be usefully employed, but there's also a risk to having demography of this sort, because if there aren't jobs for those young people as they enter the labor force and look for jobs, it can be a potential problem. By the way, although this graph shows a flattening of the youth population for Asia, if we look only at South Asia, such as India and Pakistan, those are areas where the youth population is still increasing. If you would like to see some countries where the youth population right now is more or less peaking, well, here are some graphs for Costa Rica, Mexico, Brazil, Vietnam, and Indonesia. And right around here, 2010, you can see a variety of peaks or near peaks. In Thailand and China, you see those peaks coming around here. That is about 1990. And since then, the youth population in Thailand and China, as you can see, it has been falling. This is a slightly more complicated picture. It shows for India what is known as the dependency ratio. The dependency ratio is the ratio of some group of people, such as the oldest old, relative to individuals in the age brackets 15 to 64. So what this graph shows is that for the oldest old, 85 and above, the projection is that this ratio is rising slowly over time and then more rapidly after 2050 and further on. For the old in general, that is individuals age 65 and above, we see the dependency ratio will be rising more sharply, and this is about 2010 down here. 
And what we also find is the dependency ratio for the young is falling. That is the ratio of the young relative to those in the age brackets 15 to 64. Well, that has been falling and will continue to fall, and that peaked at a time mm, about here in the 1970s. If you look at this line, this is the total dependency ratio, and that's reflecting what is the ratio of the very young plus the old compared to individuals in that age group 15 to 64. Think of the individuals in the 15 to 64 group as the ones who might be working and the others who are not working. And overall, since about the 1950s, that ratio was falling in India, but then a decade or two from now, that ratio will start to rise as there are more old people, and India will find itself with a more serious economic problem because there will be a greater number of people to support relative to the number of people who are working. Of course, one expects that over time India will be a wealthier nation, and it will use that wealth to be able to support more individuals, but still, having more people who need the support can in some ways limit economic growth, because resources need to be spent on supporting the young and the old, rather than, say, investing those resources in new projects. China has had a one-child policy for some time, and in many segments of Chinese society, this policy is enforced. So we can imagine that over time, there will be many families, older people, who will have only one child to support them. But it could be more problematic than that. It may not just be about one child supporting one parent. If you are, say, one of these only children, you may be in a position where, eventually, you will need to support two parents. And if only one individual in the family is working, and there are in essence four grandparents, you could imagine one worker having to support four elderly people, and it is expected that over time this will become an economic problem for China. Namely, there will be a relatively small number of younger people working, and a relatively larger number of elderly who will require in some fashion support. Note also that China does not have the kind of social welfare state that we find, say, in Western Europe, and even if it did, this still would require a larger working population to pay the taxes to feed into that social welfare state. It is a general problem in many parts of the developing world that perhaps they will become old before they become rich. Many commentators worry about this for parts of North Africa and the Middle East, Birth rates are falling. We're not sure exactly how fast they will fall, but they may end up in a situation where they have a relatively large elderly population, but unlike, say, the U.S., Western Europe, and Japan, they won't have the resources to easily support those older people. One point worth noting is that a lot of demographic projections and predictions about population, uh, they're not always exact. So a lot of these pictures have shown you what people think is likely to happen for the future, but there's variance on those forecasts. So here we see for global population, we can see a low scenario, we can see a middling scenario, and we can see a high scenario. And if you look out in the future, say to 2050, well, the low scenario has somewhere between 6 and 7 billion people, and the high scenario has about 10 billion people. That's a difference of 3 billion. That's a big difference. So just keep in mind, when predictions are made about demographics and population and how long people live and how many children they will have, well, sometimes we simply get it wrong. To read more in these areas, I recommend some pieces. One is by Ronald Lee. Another is by David Lamb. They're both available online. And also just Google demographic transition and economics demographic transition. But if you'd like to see where these pictures came from and what's behind them, we'll go to the pieces by Lee and Lamb, and again, those are online.